for our medical moment today, we're going to talk about dogs who have sore backs and necks. As you know, sometimes we see pets that are sore, they're painful, um, and we always tell our clients that it could be that they're sore and painful because of a soft tissue injury, like a muscle strain or sprain, or a puncture wound would be another soft tissue injury, or they could be painful because of a pinched nerve or they could be painful because of trouble with their bones and joints. And so we try to sort out which one is it. Um, and uh, pulled muscle certainly happens, but if they rest and lay low and watch TV, it usually goes away just with anti-inflammatories. Um, you know, a puncture wound, you can usually find a puncture wound because if they can lick it, they'll lick it. And if they can't, they will be a scab or a sore. Okay, so uh, that's the soft tissue. The ones who have nerve pain, usually the pain is exquisite. Um, and they guard themselves because they know if they move the wrong way, it's going to zing them, right? So they come in here, and if it's their neck, they'll look at you, but they don't want to look at you, right? They're guarding their neck. And if we ask them to move their neck or push along their spine, they usually say, ouch. And if nerve pain is, if, if the trouble is due to compression of nerves, and it's more advanced than just early stages, sometimes there will be poor nerve function. So you'll notice that's when we're checking to see can they place their foot and replace their foot correctly. The term is conscious proprioception. And of course, when nerve compression is severe, they're in a wheelchair. They're paralyzed. They can't move their back legs, for example. Um, uh, so that's compression of nerves. Um, and then um, the last one is trouble with bones and joints. We most often see that in high motion joints like hip, knees, and elbows. We can see arthritic changes along the spine. But there is another uh, uh, condition that we actually saw it this past week where it's sort of a combination of trouble with bones and trouble with nerves simultaneously. Um, and we don't always think about this one because um, it's most often when there's nerve trouble that it is a disc that is compressing the nerves. Um, but the reason why we always recommend x-rays is because we don't want to miss this particular Thing. And the thing that I'm talking about is called discospondylitis. Now we talk about spondylosis a lot because that's the arthritic changes that bridges between vertebrae. We don't talk about discospondylitis very often because it's kind of rare. But what it is, is when there is an infection of the bones of the spinal column at the joint between, between uh, a vertebra. So normally you have a vertebra, a disc, and a vertebra. And if the disc is bulging, it can put pressure on the nerves, and that's somewhat common. But there are times when there can be an infection right cuddled up next to the disc. And the infection extends into the bone of the vertebra that are right next door. So um, we have an x-ray. Um, can you show this x-ray on the video? So this is our pooch who has a vertebra here with a straight end plate and a vertebra here with a straight end plate. And then this vertebra, there's a straight end plate here. But if you look right here, instead of having a straight end plate, it looks like there's a C taken out of the end of this vertebra. And on the other side of the missing bone, there's extra bone that's been laid down. So that is the look of an infection of the bone of the vertebral spine. And the term for that is discospondylitis. And most often, the infection is caused by bacteria, but occasionally that infection could be caused by a fungus through the bloodstream, typically. Uh, the infection arrives through the bloodstream. Um, the other way that the infection could arrive there, if this lesion, this discospondylitis lesion, was further back at the TL junction where the thoracic spine and the lumbar spine gets together, um, uh, there's another way that that can become infected. Sometimes dogs, while they're running through the great outdoors, they inhale a foxtail, those little brass arms, and if it goes into their lungs, it will sometimes migrate out of their lung into their chest cavity, and it migrates up, and it lodges at the top of their diaphragm just underneath their spine. And that grass arm can actually carry bacteria that causes an infection. Wow. So that's another way that they can have discospondylitis. But that would occur, that would not occur here in the neck, that would occur further back at the TL junction. Oh, 
problem. So when we see this, now the big question is, okay, is it really an infection? And it, if it is, is it bacterial or is it fungal? Because of course, if it's bacterial, we're gonna use antibiotics. If it's fungal, we need antifungals. Right here in uh, our area, in the Saddleback Valley, we don't have a lot of these fungus. The fungus that would infect the bone typically would come from the soil, not here where we live. Um, and the closest place we see it is in the desert. Um, in the Imperial Valley, there's a thing called valley fever, which is coccidiomycosis, which is a fungus that lives in the dirt. Dogs and people can inhale this spore and it infects your body and it can end up in their bones. So in this particular case, this pet did not have a history of travel outside the area, so fungus seemed pretty unlikely. Um, but to try to prove that it was really a bacterial infection, we collected two kinds of samples. Um, we collected a urine sample and we collected a blood sample for culture. Um, uh, and as it turns out, the urine did not grow any bacteria, but the blood culture, you guys remember, we shaved the neck, we scrubbed the neck like it was ready for surgery. We collected blood and it actually grew bacteria from the bloodstream. So that pretty well proves that this is a bacterial infection that arrived in the bone from the bloodstream. Why would you check the urine? Because sometimes these infections get filtered out through the kidneys and they have a UTI. Yeah, right. And we're trying to find the organism so that we can do a culture so that we can do a sensitivity, which means killing it with antibiotics in the laboratory, so that we know what is the right antibiotic. Right. Because these infections require treatment for a minimum of 12 weeks. If you stop early, the infection comes right back. So she's going to be on antibiotics for 12 weeks, maybe longer. But the good news is that when you treat these, if you catch them early and you treat them, you get the infection under control, they feel better, pressure goes down, they're more active. What, how, um, what's the recheck to find out if it's gone? Is it an x-ray, is it blood work? Great question. So how is she feeling? Is she more mobile, more active? Mm -hmm. And we're going to repeat the x-rays at four week intervals. Okay. And we're going to expect to see that the films are improving uh, as the infection is under control and the bone grows back. Question over here. No, no, no. We probably won't do another culture. We'll be tracking the X-rays and how she's feeling. Some of these dogs actually end up staying on antibiotics for a year because it's hard to clear up infections in bone. That's why. That's why they're on so long. Yeah. Over here. So that shape of that C right there uh -huh. is that going to completely go away? And Again. We're hoping that the punched out lesion will go away and it'll be remodeled with bone. It'll probably never look normal, but but this is an abscess. This is a pocket yeah. of pussy goo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Curlant debris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can those antibox cause other <laughs> trouble? Potentially. But it doesn't change the fact that she has an infection in her bone. So we kind of have to go there. Yes. Untreated. Well, more lesions appear because it's fatal, but what are the progressions? Yeah, so untreated, the infection grows and invades the neighborhood, which could eventually put enough pressure on the disc, uh, on her spine, that she could be paralyzed. Yeah, right, because if the bones get eaten away and there's nothing to hold her head to her body, right, yeah. and it's insta instability in the spine, yeah. yeah. What antibiotics? Uh, she's on a fluoroquinolone um, based on the culture and sensitivity. She ended up on uh, marble foxes. Correct. But it was sensitive to marble foxes. That's crazy. Okay, good. Thanks.